Welcome to another one of my kinematics videos. Here in this example, we have a ball that is thrown up from the top of a building with an initial velocity of 30 meters per second. And in my last two videos, we answered question number one and we answered question number two. And in this video, we're going to answer question number three. It says, what is the height of the building if the velocity before impact is 90 meters per second? All right, so we know that we have initial velocity of 30 meters per second when the ball or object is thrown up. And we know that before impact that the velocity is equal to 90 meters per second. And using this information, we need to find the height of this building. And before I get started with this example, let me introduce myself. My name is Chris, and I am here to help you with all of your math and your physics needs. And I want to let you know that I do offer homework solutions. So if you need any extra help with your homework, uh, send me an email to homework solutions at mathmeeting.com and make sure that you send pictures. Send me pictures to homework solutions at mathmeeting.com and I'll get back to you immediately with a quote. But let's not waste any more time and let's get started right away with this example. All right, so let's answer question number three. What is the height of the building given that the velocity of the object before impact is 90 meters per second. All right, and we're gonna use the same principles that we use for all of our other kinematics problems. All right, we're gonna use these formulas here on the left. And notice how all these formulas have four unknowns. And we are given three of those unknowns and we need to solve for the fourth. So we need to find which three unknowns that are given to us. All right, so we know that the initial velocity of the ball being thrown up is going to be equal to 30 meters per second. So when, when, the, when the ball is thrown up immediately, we have an initial velocity of 30 meters per second. All right, and I'll write this underneath just to keep all our information organized. So we have an initial velocity of 30 meters per second. All right. And we also know that uh, the velocity right before impact is equal to 90 uh, meters per second. Okay, so when uh, right after the ball is thrown up or the object is thrown up, it's going to reach its maximum height, then it's going to start coming down. And then when it comes down, right before it hits the ground, or instant, the instant before it hits the ground, we're going to have a velocity of 90 uh, meters per second. But since this is going in the opposite direction of our initial velocity, it's going to be a negative value. So this, this final velocity right before impact is going to be equal to negative 90 meters per second because it's going the opposite direction of the initial velocity. All right, so let's write this underneath our initial velocity. So we have a final velocity that is equal to negative 90 meters per second. All right, so what other information is given to us? Well, we know that the acceleration of this object is going to be the acceleration due to gravity because we have the, the gravity pushing down on the ball. So we know that the acceleration due to gravity is equal to 9.81 meters per second. So I'm just gonna round it to 10 and it's gonna be a negative 10 meters per second squared. Okay, and once again, the reason why this is negative is because we are going in the downward direction. Our, our downward direction we assign as negative values and upward direction is positive values. All right, so our acceleration due to gravity is gonna be equal to negative 10 meters per second squared. All right, so now we have three unknowns. We have our acceleration, we have our final velocity, and we have our initial velocity. So we have everything we need uh, to solve this problem. And we have to find out what we are looking for. So it says, what is the height of the building? All right, so we're trying to find the height of the building or the distance or displacement of the building. So we're looking for displacement, which is delta x. So delta x is what we're trying to solve for. So I'll put a little question mark there. And we need to use these four things to find out which 
formula that we're going to use. So we have initial velocity, we have final velocity, we have acceleration, and we're trying to find delta x. So which equation has all four of these unknowns? Okay, and if you notice this third equation right here, which seems to be the one that we're using a lot, this third equation has those four unknowns. It has final velocity, it has initial velocity, it has acceleration, and it has delta x. And since, since we're solving uh, for delta x, I'm going to rearrange that equation and rewrite it in terms of delta x. So if we rearrange this equation and rewrite it in terms of delta x, it's going to look something like this. We have delta x is equal to our final velocity squared minus our initial velocity squared, all divided by 2 times our acceleration. All right, so now the only thing we have to do is plug everything into our equation. So we'll start with our final velocity squared minus our initial velocity squared. All right, well, we know that our final velocity is negative 90, and we know that our initial velocity is positive 30, so we're going to have negative 90 squared minus 30 squared. So I'm going to erase our numerator, and I'm going to replace it with a negative 90 squared minus 30 squared. All right, and I'm going to do the same thing with our acceleration. We know that our acceleration is equal to negative 10, so I'm going to erase our a, and I'm going to replace it with a negative 10. All right, so now the only thing we have left to do is some easy calculations. We know that negative 90 squared is equal to positive 8100, and we know that 30 squared is equal to 900, so we have 8100 minus 900, which is equal to a positive 7200. So I'm going to erase our numerator and replace it with a positive 7200. And in our denominator, we have 2 times negative 10. 2 times negative 10 is equal to negative 20. So I'm going to erase our denominator and replace it with a negative 20. All right, so our displacement, delta x, or the height of the building, is equal to 7200 over negative 20. Um, 7200 over negative 20 is equal to negative 360. So our height of the building, or displacement distance, delta x, is equal to negative 360. And our units are in meters. And some of you are probably wondering why our distance has a negative value. And so let me explain why this is happening. Um, the reason why our distance, or the height of the building, is a negative 360 meters is because we assigned a the downward direction as negative. So we measured from the top of the building to the bottom of the building, and we, and we assigned, at the beginning of the problem, a downward direction as negative. So that's why we have a negative distance. So, so the building is actually 360 meters tall. Don't let this negative value um, confuse you at all. All right, so this is the solution to our problem. The building is 360 meters. I hope this gave you a better idea on kinematics. If you want to keep on learning, check out my next video on kinematics. Once again, don't forget, I do offer homework solutions. So send me an email to homeworksolutions at mathmedian.com with pictures, and I would love to help you out. Uh, thank you so much for watching, and I will see you in my next video.